Mbunge wa upinzani ambaye pia ni kiongozi wa chama cha ACT nchini Tanzania Zito Kabwe anasema ana wasiwasi na usalama wake baada ya kupata vitisho kutokana na hatua yake ya kupinga msaada wa serikali kutoka benki ya dunia. Katika mahojiano maalumu na VOA hapa Washington Kabwe alisema hajutii hata kidogo kutoa rai ya kusitisha msaada wa dola 500 wa dola 500 kutoka benki ya dunia kwa sababu zingetumiwa kinyume cha makusudio ya awali. 2018 uh, benki ya dunia walizuia misaada na hata kuleta uh, watu wao kutembelea Tanzania kwa sababu tatu. Moja sheria ya takwimu, mbili matamshi ya viongozi kuhusiana na watu uh, ambao wanatengwa, wanaita marginalized uh, groups na tatu kuhusiana na kuzui, kauli ya rais kuzuia watoto ambao wamepata ujauzito kurejea shuleni na benki ya dunia ikamtuma eh, makamu eh, kiongozi wake kwa upande wa Afrika Hafiz Ghanem kuweza kufika eh, na kazungumza na rais Magufuli na baadaye waziri wa fedha ndugu Philip Mpango akaja eh, kwenye mkutano wa benki ya dunia hapa na alivorudi nyumbani akamwandikia barua rais Magufuli kuhusu masharti ambayo benki ya dunia wanataka yafanyike ili fedha zile ziweze kutoka yani zilikuwa fedha nyingi kwa ujumla wake zaidi ya dola za kimarekani bilioni moja nukta tano ambayo ni mikopo yote masuala mbalimbali maji elimu eh, fedha za watu maskini ambao zinalipwa kupitia TASAF na kadhalika sasa eh, benki ya dunia wakafanikiwa kuisukuma serikali ikabadilisha sheria ya takwimu. Kwa hiyo fedha za kwanza zikatoka mwaka jana mwezi Septemba baada ya sheria ya takwimu kwa imebadilishwa na bunge. Sasa fedha za pili zikuwa ni hizi za mkopo wa elimu. Na benki ya dunia iliahidi serikali, eh, serikali iliahidi benki ya dunia kwamba eh, itaruhusu sasa watoto ambao wampata ujauzito warejee shuleni. Lakini ukisoma ule mkataba wa mkopo hakuna hiyo ruhusa isipokuwa wametengeneza kitu wenyewe wanaita alternative pathway yani njia mbadala na hiyo njia mbadala ni nini njia mbadala ni kwamba waende wakasome eh, kusuka ususi wakasome upishi wakasome usafishaji na mambo kama haya sisi tunasema hapana mtoto wa kike ana haki ya kurudi eh, shuleni kuendelea na masomo kutokana na chaguo lake yeye na katika maelezo yako au yenu kwa benki ya dunia uh, kulikuwa na wasiwasi kwamba huenda hizi pesa zikatumiwa kwa njia kwa namna nyingine sio kwa ajili ya elimu ya wasichana mna ushahidi gani au mna hakika gani kwamba kulikuwa na lengo hilo kwa upande wa serikali kwanza huu ni mwaka wa uchaguzi mwaka wa uchaguzi serikali inapopata zaidi ya dola za kimarekani milioni tano zaidi ya trilioni moja kwa ajili kwa mfano kujenga shule elfu moja. Kwa vyote vile manake ni kwamba unaipa eh, endorsement, eh, unaiunga mkono serikali. Sababu serikali haitaenda kusema kwamba tumejenga shule elfu moja kwa fedha za benki ya dunia. Serikali itasema kwamba chama cha mapinduzi kimejenga shule elfu moja. Eh, kwa hiyo manake ni kwamba benki ya dunia inaingilia mchakato wa uchaguzi ndani ya nchi. Na hoja ya msingi hapa ni kwamba una serikali ambayo inatumia matrilioni ya fedha kununua ndege ambazo zinatumiwa na asilimia moja tu ya wananchi halafu inaenda kukopa kwa ajili ya elimu kwa kama hii serikali ilikuwa inajali elimu isingehangaika na e, vitu ambavyo vinatumiwa na asilimia moja tu ya watu na badala yake ingetumia hizo fedha za, za zinazopatikana za kodi za wananchi kupeleka kwenye elimu kutokana na tofauti hizo uh, baadhi ya viongozi wa serikali na matamshi mengine yametolewa ndani ya bunge uh, kukuita wewe ni msaliti uh, wewe ni mhaini na hata kuna kuna namna fulani ya kusema kwamba unastahili kuondoka duniani uh, kwa sababu ya kitendo hicho. Uh, unajibu nini? Kwanza mwenye uwezo kuondoa mtu duniani ni Mwenyezi Mungu peke yake. Mungu ndo ambaye anapanga unaondokaje duniani. Kwa hiyo e, si tishwi na kauli za wanadamu kuhusiana na uhai wangu. Lakini si jambo ambalo nalichukulia kwa wepesi 
kwa sababu tayari tuna mfano dhahiri wa mbunge mwenzetu ambaye kutokana na kauli ya rais Magufuli kwamba watu wasaliti kwenye vita huwa wanauawa alipigwa risasi mchana eh, akiwa katika yani bunge, bunge liko, mkutano wa bunge ukao unaendelea kwa hiyo tunafahamu tuna kwamba hawa watu wanaweza kufanya kama jinsi ambavyo walivyofanya kwa tundulisi kwa hiyo tunachukulia kwa umakini mkubwa na kwa uzito mkubwa vitisho ambavyo vimetoka niambie hivi umepata vitisho moja kwa moja kwako wewe na je yeah. una hofu na usalama wako siku ambayo uh, benki ya dunia walivyo bodi ilivyoahirisha mjadala kuhusiana na na na, na mkopo huo e, nilipokea e, ujumbe wa, wa simu kupitia signal e, asubuhi kuambiwa kuwa alerted na makina sisi tuna watu wetu e, na huwezi kuwa kiongozi wa kisiasa ambao huna e, vyanzo vya taarifa e, kwa hiyo tukaambiwa kwamba e, labda usirudi ukirudi e, tutakumaliza kwa hiyo e, tunachukulia kwa uzito kama nilivyosema hapo awali lakini pili tumepata taarifa leo e, kwamba tayari e, mamlaka ya kupambana na rushwa imeandaa mashtaka ya e, ya utakatishaji wa fedha dhidi yangu na kwamba nikifika tu nyumbani na pele kwa mahakamani kushtakiwa si tunafahamu kwamba sasa hivi e, mashtaka makosa ya utakatishaji wa fedha yanatumika kama silaha za kisiasa na ni zito kabu akizungumza na VOA miongoni mwa mambo akisema kuwa hajuti kutoa rai ya kusitisha msaada wa dola milioni tano kutoka benki ya dunia. Turning to East Africa now, a human rights watch report on Tanzania paints a grim picture of democracy and freedom of expression. Human rights watch says since the election of President John Magufuli in December 2015 Tanzania has witnessed a marked decline in respect for freedom of expression, association and assembly. The report cites increasing attacks on opposition members, journalists and critics of the government by Tanzanian authorities. Now for more insight on this story I'm joined by Zito Kabwe, a Tanzanian opposition politician and founder of the Alliance for Change and Transparency political party. Mr. Kabwe, welcome to Africa 54 and to VOA. Thank you very much. Now, let's start off by telling us what is the status of democracy in Tanzania as we speak. Democracy is in decline uh, since uh, the last four years. The opposition parties are not allowed to organize, to conduct political activities. For those who are members of parliament, uh, they are just allowed to operate within their constituencies. Although there are a lot of standing blocks, myself is an example. A few weeks ago, uh, the police uh, banned uh, a rally in my constituency. Uh, a number of uh, leaders of political parties are in court for different uh, kind of cases. And uh, we live in a situation where any time you are in court, so long as you are, you are opposition. So we are in really, really uh, 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 nose diving as far as dem democracy is concerned. Now, as you are coming from Africa to the US, I read reports very recent, we're talking less than 72 hours, that there are death threats against you. Uh, who are the death threats from and for what reason? Do you know? Maybe I'll start with the second, with the reason. Uh, uh, I wrote a letter to the World Bank to caution them about the loan they are going to give to Tanzania. Uh, on education uh, because that loan uh, is inherently discriminatory against the uh, uh, girls, uh, school girls who get pregnant. Uh, in accordance to the uh, election manifesto by the ruling party, statements by various public leaders, and also with an example from uh, the sister uh, country, island of Zanzibar, the young girls are allowed or were supposed to be allowed to go back to school after delivery. But President Magufuli has banned that. And the World Bank uh, wanted to finance uh, the education loan that did not address the issue of discrimination. So the ruling party members of parliament and uh, supporters of the ruling party uh, uh, went to the floors of parliament, threatened that I should be killed because I'm not patriotic by stopping that loan. But uh, I take the, the threats very seriously. 
uh, because uh, we have an example for our colleague who was shot, uh, Mr. Tundulisu, and uh, he's now in Belgium in exile. Uh, so we take the threats very seriously. But also don't be surprised when I land back in the country to hear that I've been uh, uh, jailed because the government uh, uses uh, money laundering offenses to jail the critics. So money laundering offenses are a disguised way of uh, detention uh, without trial. No. So don't be surprised if you hear that I'm arrested the moment I land in the country. Yeah, because 2019, they, uh, you were banned from traveling out of the country. Yes, in How June 2019, I was banned that was uh, from lifted? traveling. Yes, uh, I had to ask a permission from Speaker uh, to travel to during this, uh, this trip that I, I, I'm here. Now, let's talk about the 2020 elections. We're talking months. You are going to be holding a presidential parliamentary elections. What is the playing field like? The playing field is not fair. Uh, that's why we are going around meeting uh, partners of Tanzania in order to ask them to pressurize the government to make sure that the election is free and fair. The Electoral Commission is not independent. Uh, but also we have uh, cases where the election was nullified. For example, in Zanzibar, uh, uh, the election was nullified and the current government of Zanzibar is illegitimate government. And uh, the last, uh, last November, November 2019, there were civic elections in the country and 96% of opposition candidates were barred from contesting. So we are worried that the country is uh, uh, going towards single party system. That's why you are mobilizing the international community to pressurize the, pre uh, the government of President Magufuli to make sure that we have a free, fair and credible election in 2020. So is the opposition united uh, in terms of how they are going to mobilize this and how you're going to fight for the rights of Tanzanians? And are you planning to run for the presidency? The circumstances in the country force up to, to unite uh, because uh, our biggest goal should be to remove uh, President Magufuli and CCM from office so that we reorganize our country, we build uh, Tanzania that is thriving, uh, providing economic opportunities uh, for, uh, for the citizens and making sure that we, uh, we address the uh, shortcomings in the criminal justice system uh, in the country whereby people are just arrested and being imprisoned without, uh, without uh, completeness, completeness of, the, of the investigations. And uh, so those circumstances force us to unite. So there is no way we'll face the election without being uniting. Will I run or not? It will depend on the decision of the parties in coalition. All right, now you're talking of incarceration. Tell us about the status of the journalists like Kabendera who have been in jail. What is their status like? Up to now, uh, Eric is still in jail. Every time he goes to court, they say that uh, the investigations are still continuing. Uh, we heard that uh, he has applied for a plea again, a system whereby the, there are negotiations between the prosecutor and him, but he's still in jail and many other uh, human rights activists. Uh, today, uh, on the 5th uh, of February, uh, Tito Magotti, a lawyer from the Human Rights Association and his colleague, uh, were brought to court and the prosecution said uh, uh, investigations are continuing. And we'll, we'll see more of this if the international community will not come hard on Tanzania. Oh, Mr. Kabwe, thank you very much for bringing us up to speed on what's going on in Tanzania. We hope for the best. Thank you so much. I, uh, Mr. Zito Kabwe is a Tanzanian opposition politician and founder of the Alliance for Change and Transparency Political Party.